On this uh, video, I'm going to take a look at a question like number 11. It's uh, kind of similar to number 9 and 10 on the week 2 homework, but then again, it throws you a little curve down here about uh, constructing a residual plot. Let's look at this one from start to finish, and I would recommend doing it a little bit at a time in Excel because some of the things that I show you how to do will cover up your original data. So I would get an answer, put it in my homework, go to the next step. All right, I'm, first thing I'm going to do is click uh, the button to uh, get the data. Say open in Excel, uh, open. I have to pause my recording every once in a while because I'm working on dual screens. But when it opens up, I'm not sure if yours does this, but I have to click a button that says Enable Editing. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is just uh, get a plot here and get the regression equation. And in order to do that, I'm going to left click on that X right there, drag down to the right corner, hit Insert. I'm going to go over to the uh, scatter charts, click the scatter, scatter charts, the first one. There it is. And uh, remember, I uh, right click on one of the data points, say add trend line. When I do that, I get another menu over on the right. I'm going to choose, you can't see all of it because I don't have it all recorded here, but down here, the box that says Display Equation on Chart, I check it. There it is. I'm going to come up here and make it a little bit larger so you can see it. Okay, 0.1551 plus 19.128. So I've got my slope and my y-intercept. And notice uh, on my homework, I just type that in. Here it is, 0 0.155 times x plus 19.128. You've got to get the correct number of decimal places, or it will count it incorrect. So that is one problem that I often see. Students will put in 0.155, whatever the exact answer was, and they'll get mad because they say, I know I got it right. If you don't round it correctly, it will count it wrong. That's part of the problem. Now the next one, notice here on uh, my regression lines, my, my correct graph had a positive slope. Um, the first two have negative slopes. In other words, the line is going down. I throw them out first. Then I look right here at these two choices and compare to my uh, graph that was generated right here and uh, you can tell that by the grouping that we got that right also. Now the next part of the question it asks us for a residual plot. Most of you have no idea you know what the residual plot is unless you've read the book carefully and I hope you have but uh, let me show you how easy it is to get a residual plot going back to my Excel uh, uh, spreadsheet here where I brought the data in I'm gonna click on data and over here on the right under uh, above analysis you should have a button that says data analysis now if you don't have that I mean you can go to uh, your Excel you should have been able to upload data analysis tools when you uh, uploaded your Excel but by clicking data and going to data analysis. It should be there. Uh, if not, you can try the Excel version on the Citrus Lab where you can do it on uh, the virtual desktop. Should be there. But you just click that button. When we get there, you've got a lot of choices, but we're going to choose regression and say OK. You're going to input your Y range first. Now remember your Y range, well, I'm going to click on the first number under Y, drag down to the last number. On my X's, I'm going to click on the first number, not the X, drag down to the last one, got it. And then under residuals, none of these will be checked. You just want to check residual plots. Say OK. Boom, here it is. It's over here on the right. Let's see if I can make it look a little bit different. 
There it is. You can stretch that graph and make it look, you know, uh, as square or rectangular as you would like. What I would like for you to get in the habit of doing is just looking, particularly on these multiple choice questions. Say, okay, I got three under here at around 30, 40. Here, I got three above that are all between 40 and 50. Look at my choices. Number one, it's going to be one of these two. Look at this. On B, almost just like it. Now, so B was the correct choice. Now, in uh, answering this question, it says determine if any patterns are in the residual plot and explain what they suggest about the relationship between the variables. The, re the residual plot, this, shows, it does show a pattern because the residuals do not fluctuate about zero, and zero literally is zero. This implies the regression line is not a good representation of the relationship between the variables. Now, I want you to make sure that you go through and uh, look at these in your textbook and read these because I can't go through everything here. Let's look at, let's say, number 12. I think number 12 is very similar. Now, since I am an instructor, my view is different than yours. Let's look at number 12 and see if it's uh, similar. No, here's an R-value question. Uh, maybe I'll cover this on a separate video. Number 12 is a different one. So I'll close this one out. Hopefully this helps you.